Their Fated Travels. Chapter 19 The party had made their way to what seemed to be the final destination in this entire investigation that they had been roped into, and hopefully an end to their business in Middenheim. Maestro, for one, just wanted to end this quickly and without any more fuss, but he knew that this wouldn't be the case and was prepared to face whatever the fates would throw at him. Dieter began to get a bad feeling which when coupled with the slight burning sensation in his chest from each of the marks that were there, he felt even more on edge. He unconsciously rubbed each of the marks whilst he tried to formulate a plan in his mind. He didn't have to much worry for Tristran's safety as much as he did the others, of course. Sunrise was still a couple of hours away, and Tobias was skulking behind the group, in the shadows while Tordrad and Tristran took point as the party finally arrived outside the tavern. From the look of the place, it had long since been abandoned and left fall into disrepair. Rysandria's skin began to crawl, as if trying to escape from whatever lied within. She remembered feeling like this once before back in Altdorf when the group were with her in the sewer system. This gave her pause for thought and gave rise to a question in her mind. What terrible aspect of chaos lays within? Something feels odd here, Maestro announced as if he was expecting everyone present to hang on his words as he spoke. Of course, no one looked his way, much to his annoyance. With a momentary frown, he continued on anyway. I can definitely sense a disruption in the ether, almost as if something is pulling it here. It is small now, but there is definitely a swell of non-transient magical energy. Now don't get me wrong, there are swells of magic everywhere. Magic itself is indeed quite a swollen thing. It's just that it is quite swollen in particular in this general vicinity. Dieter just sighed. Maestro just didn't know when to shut up. The trainee doctor's sixth sense was telling him not to enter, and as much as he would have liked to listen to it, he knew that he had come too far to just drop out now. Tobias unconsciously scratched the back of his head as he often had a habit of doing. He hadn't been paying attention to a single word that came out of the wizard's mouth as he had been more focused on the map of the city sewer system he had acquired in the thieves' den. Sandria ignored the words of the party about her, praying to Shalia for strength and protection. Tordrad didn't understand what was being said, but got the general idea of what was happening. He could see everyone's posture had shifted as if they were expecting a pretty dangerous confrontation. Well, almost everyone. Maestro still had his shoulders slumped and looked disheartened at the fact that they were all ignoring him. Dieter wouldn't say it out loud, but he could also sense something was wrong with this place. As he touched the handle for the door, he felt a wave of oppressive malignance that would have made a weaker-minded man break down, but the worst thing he felt was his hand starting to go numb. So much power here. This does not bode well for the group. After that incident with the demon, I wonder how well we might fare with whatever is in here, he thought. He slowly opened the door as he reached for his machete. Once the door was fully open, the group peered inside. The common room was completely empty and several of the tables and chairs were rotten and ridden with termites. This particular stench of death and decay was extremely potent and familiar to them. And they didn't need Maestro's witch sight to tell them that the plague lord was at work here, which of course he did anyway. As the party made their way to the cellar, Rosandria held her arms against herself, eyes closed in concentration, as she mentally fought off the feeling of corruption seeping into her very being. Just like last time, being in the vicinity of such pure evil hurt her body. This only served to mentally embolden her further onto her path of faith. The cellar was just as bad as the common room in appearance, 
and even the metal hinges on the door at the opposite end to where they entered was rusted away and looked like it would fall over at the slightest touch. There were sounds coming from the other side of the door, excited whispers, deep animalistic growls, and various other ominous noises that set Maestro's hair on end. Tordrad furrowed his eyebrows as he moved forward and reached to push the door open. This was a signal to the rest of the party to ready their weapons. Tordrad didn't just open the door. He kicked it down, sending it sailing through the air and crashing into one of the room's occupants. He drew his scimitar and stepped into the dusty open area beyond, pointing the weapon towards the one person in the room that he instantly recognised. He remembered the stench of corruption that flowed through this place. The decayed form of black rot stood atop a dais, his thick leathery skin almost seeming to shine in the dim torchlight. Next to him was an equally blessed chaos sorcerer, and surrounding them were no less than fifty chaotic beasts, ranging from skaven to various sized beast men and mutants. The room looked like it was recently hewn by pickaxes, which was further proven by the various dwarf corpses that littered around the room. They had dug their way in previously to try and influence the final battle of Middenheim, or perhaps to take advantage of the city's weakened state and destroy it slowly through the corruption of the Plague Lord. The beastmen present were jaded under the influence of Grandfather Nurgle, physically showing signs of their benefactor's gifts. The Skaven present were not particularly within the influence of Nurgle. They were not those of Clan Pestilens, for example. They had instead helped Blackrot make his way into the city from the Skaven Undercity below after his forced visitation upon their home. They were nothing but helpful to simply get rid of him from their lair and protect themselves from reprisals if they'd refused. This race and such places as these were something that humans denied even existed. In some areas, such as Nuln, in fact, you could be in trouble with the law for even suggesting that the rat people might be real. Tordrad wore a scowl on his face. The Kels champion had survived the last encounter and was now here in Middenheim. The rest of the party had entered the room as well. Rosandria was gripping her staff tighter than she would have liked, but she knew that now was no time to run. If she did, then all her training would have been for nothing. Dita was scowling far more than Tordrad, though. This monstrosity before him seemed to think it was better than him, and he couldn't have that. As for Maestro, his train of thought was leading him to worry about a decidedly off-putting runny nose and how that might affect this showdown. Tobias was wondering how much he could get on the black market for the poison that ran through the veins of a Chaos Champion, and Olga was letting out a low growl as he stood next to his master, ready to spring upon an opponent at a moment's notice. Tristran looked around at the small group. The expressions on their stunned faces took him by surprise. This Chaos Champion brought out a strange sense of unity that even the most experienced of warriors on the battlefield would not have known before. A strange sensation binding all living things together. Death. Or rather, disease and plague that would bring about death. For was death not the ultimate unifier? Were not all men equal in its grasp? Then Tristran turned his gaze upon the foes, noting each with an intense study. Each of the Skaven that stood opposing them were dressed in what at one point could have been considered robes, but in several places each one had a different pattern of this scheme which was created from pus and blood-filled extrusions on the body that had burst multiple times and stained them far worse than any dye attempts could produce. They all seemed to possess some sort of dark gift of their god, the Horned Rat, these unfortunates had spent too long in the Plague Champion's company. To Tristran, however, they just looked like Chaos Mutations, as they seemed to match up to several of the mutants that made up yet more of the numbers. 
diseased and plague-ridden men and women shambling along like some cruel parody of zombies. But with the misfortune of still being alive, feeling every moment of their situation, the beast men were just as disgusting to look at as the rest of the creatures present. Parts of their skin were so decayed that you could see right through to the bones underneath, and clouds of flies flew around them like they too were walking corpses. The seconds passed, with both sides just staring at each other, waiting for some sort of unseen signal to attack. 